Hi there everyone, welcome back to Dandelion Delphi Tutorials. We're continuing with SQL and we will continue in the previous program that you coded in. So the next part is to display only selected fields. Previously we used select star and the star meant that we are showing all the fields but we will have a need to sometimes just show, show some of the fields from our table. Between your select and your from is what the user will see when you run your SQL statement. So here they will see the company ID, the name of the activities, that was the field called activity, and then the number of tickets sold from the table name TBL activity. Note that when you are listing these fields that they will display in the same order that you've listed them and that we separate these fields with a comma. Note that there's no comma after the last field before you're from. If you do add this comma, you will get a runtime error. You will see that your code will often run or your program will run with errors. And then when you select a menu or a button with some SQL code in it, you will experience a runtime error. So your program will crash. There is a little error box that pops up. Read the error there, it often has some hints as to what went wrong. This example here is now sorting the table according to the second field listed. So I can say order by activity or I can say order by two, which means the second field listed in your select. This works for the majority of the activities but there are some exceptions that will be explained later. When we are using field names in SQL, we sometimes need to add square brackets around these field names, and there are three instances in which we need to use square brackets. The first one is when we have a space in a field name. So this field was date space of space birth. To indicate to SQL that this is one field name, we put square brackets around this field name. If you would order by at the end and you wanted to order by date of birth, you would also have to use the square bracket. So wherever you use this field name, you'll have to add square brackets. And then the more difficult one is reserved words. So reserved words are any word or code that has an existing meaning in Delphi. And there are so many that we often struggle to find out which one it is. But here's some examples, for example, number, name, and even names, items. Remember, we have the radio group dot items. If we want to use these field names and we want to indicate to SQL, we are referring to a field name and not a property, for example. We need to put square brackets around these reserved words. The last instance is when we are using operators. So in my example here, I have a field here, M or F, or male or female, and because I'm using this divide that has another meaning in, in SQL, I need to put the field name in square brackets to indicate to SQL that I'm now using a field name, and it doesn't need to divide the M field by the F field. Here are some examples of error message that you could experience with one of your runtime errors. Um, this one says the select statement includes a reserved word or an argument that is misspelled or blah, 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 blah. And the first thing that you could do is just go to your SQL statement and try and guess which ones could possibly be reserved words. There's also no harm in putting square brackets around fields that don't need them. The second error that you sometimes experience is the unspecified error. Unfortunately, you get this error with a whole bunch of errors. But if you do get this error, first thing to do, the simplest thing to do would be to go and put square brackets around field names that could possibly need them. So now we get to some real queries where we actually don't display all of the records of the table, but only some of them. And this we accomplish with the where. Just note that your statements will always now start with a select, either star or listing some names, and then a from, and then up with the table name from which you would like to read. 
and after the table name will then come the where. The where does not need to be in capital letters and after your where then goes a field name and an operator. So grade is a field name in the table TBL learners. My operator equals, I can also use not equal to, greater than and equal to, less than and equal to, as you have done in if statements. And then the value. I, in this instance, I want to see all the grade 10 learners. So I am adding to my where clause the grade equals to 10, and that will show me only the records of the grade 10 learners. Grade in this instance would be an integer data type or number data type in my table. If I want to do the same, but the field name here is a text data type, then I need to use the double quotes around the value after my operator. So I want to look for everyone whose name is John, and I have to put double quotes around my value. This is what we call the design view of our tables and you will see TBL company consists of these fields and this is where I select the data type of the field. So the data type short text is like string and then date time like we've used in register date is a date data type. In the table activity you'll find these field names and then number could be integer or real. Currency is dealt with the same as we deal with numbers. And then we have a yes no field, which is a Boolean field, true or false, but in the, in access we call it yes no. So I've explained to you how to use numbers and text data types, but here is an example of using a yes no data type. So if I want to see everyone who has paid, I'll add to the to the end of my clause, so select all from table name where paid is equal to true and that will show me everyone who has paid. This true can also be a yes or it can also be a negative one. And if I want to see those who haven't paid, I'll add to my where clause where paid is equals to false. Note that with yes, no data types, no quotes is needed. If we want to query a date time data type, our value here needs to have hashes around it. I suggest that the, well, if you're entering hard code in here, that you enter it in the same format as your system date. So that's the date that you see at the right bottom of your screen. If you have the year last, then add it that way. If you have the year first, add it in this way. So this query here will show me everyone who ordered before, less than, the 3rd of December 1998. This one here is showing me everyone who ordered on or after the 3rd of December 1998. We can also use our AND, OR and NOT operators. So if I want to see everyone whose renting cost was more than 1000 or 2000 and their ticket cost was 20, I will combine the two conditions with an AND. If I want to see those who had a renting cost of more than 2000 as well as though those with a ticket cost of 20 I can replace my AND with an OR. For an AND both of these conditions need to be true and then only will a record show. When I'm using an OR either this condition can be true or that condition will be can be true and then a record would show. So the OR in this instance will show me more records than the AND. There's an interesting operator here called BETWEEN that we can use on our field. So here I'm saying where the cost is between 100 and 1000. The word BETWEEN might be misleading because it really means a, the cost is a value from 100 to 1000 in that range. If I had to rewrite the statement using uh, AND, I would say cost is greater or equal to 100 and cost is less or equal to 1000. I've included round brackets here, but you don't need to add round brackets in your conditions unless you want to force some conditions together. You can also apply this between two your date-time data types, you'll have to remember to put the hashes around the values. And 
Here is an example of using first name, which is in my database a text data type. And here we sit with an exception. If we say first name between A and D, it will show me everyone whose first name started with the letters A, B and C. So when you're using between on a text data type, it actually excludes the D or the second argument that you're sending it. It's now your time to practice so you can go back into this festival program. I'm not showing you the memos today and you should just get the output as on the screen. If it says example of output, this is exactly what you should see on your screen. No more and no less. You can also try the age restriction menu and also the not menu to see if you can see this output when you run your statement. And the last one for, day, for today is the between menu. See if you get this output. I hope this helps. See you soon.